when we meditate, we're getting to know the mind. And to know the mind, you have to make it still first. As though I said, lots of movements going on in the mind. In Thai, they have the phrase, Sum Roy, which is when if someone doesn't want to have his footprints seen, he steps in the footprints of other people. And there are a lot of thoughts like that in the mind. Greed, aversion, and delusion are trying to Sum Roy in your mind. And they find all kinds of opportunities. And if you're not really still, you can't see them. And even when you're still, it's, it's not that easy. But it's the only way it can be done. So stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out, and all the way between the breaths. Try to make your focus as steady as you can. And then anything else that comes up, you can detect it. And John Swett had a Dharma talk where he talked about how any lack of peace in the mind, okay, that's the stress the Buddha is talking about. So look into it. Where is it coming from? At the very least, make sure that you don't go riding with it. There's a lot of moods that come swinging through the mind. Moods that come from other people, moods that come from within. And you don't want to be pushed around by them. So you've got to take a firm stance right here. This is how you get to know the mind. This is how you replace your ignorance with knowledge. We're all coming from ignorance, and it's normal that we're going to have doubts. But the Buddha said the way you overcome the doubts is to take this as a working hypothesis that you can make a difference in your mind by the choices you make. Your choices are real. And so try making some good choices. And if you notice that you slipped, well, notice that you've slipped, and then notice the results that come from the slipping. Then come back and look at the mind when it's still, what happens in the mind when it's still. Learn how to compare these things. It's through comparison that you learn. I have a student who teaches software design. And he had a student one time who did what he called a really ugly code. And the student had no sense that it was ugly, it was just normal as far as he was concerned. And so he showed the student a much more elegant way of solving the same problem. To make the student realize, okay, there are standards. There's better and there's worse. When you see that there's better and there's worse, and that you benefit from the better, okay, you're more likely to want to do the better thing, think the better thing, speak the better thing. So look for these distinctions in your mind. That way your doubt gets replaced by knowledge. You can't tell yourself, just believe, believe, believe. You have to prove things for yourself. If you don't prove them, You can't say that you're really serious about these issues of why there's suffering, why there's not. Yet this should be the big issue in life. What are you doing that's causing unnecessary suffering? Why are you doing it? Because you don't have to. So get the mind still so you can see these things. And don't get blown away by seeing how unskillful you've been or continue to be sometimes. Just accept that that's part of being ignorant. But do you want to stay being ignorant? Well, no. So you can change. That's because the mind has this quality of being bright inside that you can make the change. You can see what you're doing, see that it's wrong. You don't have to get upset by the fact, but just admit the fact you've made a mistake and then you can resolve not to repeat it. When you have that attitude, then you can really learn. And your ignorance does get replaced by knowledge.